Ahoy and welcome. My name is Clemens Helm and you're watching CodeChips Testing Tuesday number 19. After a few episodes about testing your web front-end JavaScript code with Jasmine, I will show you how to test your Node.js applications with Jasmine today. We've got a very basic Node.js application containing a calculator module. The calculator has only got one method multiply, which we need to implement. We want to do this in a behavior-driven way using Jasmine. We've already covered Jasmine in the last three Testing Tuesday episodes. Especially Testing Tuesday number 16 will get you up and running if you're not familiar with Jasmine already. I'll link to it in the further info section. We can install Jasmine for Node.js by running npm install jasmine node g. You might need to run this command with sudo. We provided the g option to install it globally, so we're able to run jasmine node from the command line. Once this is done, we can run jasmine node which will provide us with all available options. I would like to put my specs into a spec folder, so I can pass the folder as an argument to Jasmine node, and it will run all the spec files for me. So I make the directory spec, and I run Jasmine node on the spec directory. So Jasmine node spec looked for specs in the spec directory, and finished successfully because none of our zero specs failed. Although having a green test suite is worthwhile, adding some specs to it makes it even nicer. So in my editor, I create a file calculator spec .js. Calculator spec .js. You should always finish your Jasmine spec file names with spec .js because Jasmine node will only run these files by default. So I will just paste my spec in here. In this file, we require our calculator module first, and then we add an example to check the result of multiplying two and three. So when we save this file and run the spec, it tells us that it expected undefined to be six. So let's make this spec work. The easiest way to make this happen is by letting our function return six. So when we run jasmine again, it works. But it's a little cumbersome to run the tests manually after every little change. Instead, we can use jasmine node's auto test option to let it run the specs on every change automatically. So we'll just add auto test to the end. Let's add another spec now. It should multiply three and five. So we expect the product to be 15. When we save the file, the spec starts running. Great. Let's change our implementation now to return 15 and see what happens. Nothing happens. That's because Jasmine node will only look for changes in the spec folder. We can overcome this misery by calling jasmine node on the root folder instead of on the spec folder. But this will also instruct jasmine node to look for spec files in the whole project. Especially in larger projects, this will make auto tests less snappy because looking up the files will take longer. But we can pass another option to solve this problem. We call jasmine node only for our spec folder and add an additional option, watch the current directory. Now Jasmine node listens to changes in the whole project while only looking for specs in the spec folder. When we save the file again now, our first spec fails. Now let's correct our implementation. We want this to return multiplier one by multiplier two. When I save the file now, both tests work. There are some more options for Jasmine node and I highly encourage you to check them out by running Jasmine node without arguments, or by visiting the GitHub README. This was it for today. I hope you found it useful. Next week, I will show you how to continuously deploy your Node.js applications to Heroku using Jasmine and the code chip. Have a beautiful week and never give up, but always stay shipping.